Hey guys, let's do auto rotations in the hip. So auto rotations are a way of more or less controlled crashing when you lose the connection between your engine and your main rotors. So whether it's engine failure, fuel failure, linkage failure, something, the engine is no longer powering or spinning the main rotor disc. And so your helicopter isn't generating lift anymore. And what's going to happen is you're basically going to fall out of the sky because helicopters don't have wings and don't generate much lift on their own or really any. So there's a way of mitigating this and putting a helicopter into a glide and using the airflow from your fall that'll be washing up through from the bottom of the blades up through the top. Much like when you clean off a fan in your computer case by spraying compressed air through it and how it spins up the blades, this works the same way. And we can get some cyclic authority back this way and kind of control our glide path to somewhere hopefully safe and set down hopefully without damaging anything. So the process is pretty simple. We can simulate the engine failure either by throttling all the way down or by hitting our fuel shut off or engine stop uh, lever. So we're gonna hit the engine stop levers for this. That's these two red handles up here, which will stop the flow of fuel to the engine, uh, which will prevent it from being able to spin up the main rotor blades. And then the next thing we're gonna do is drop our collective and reset our trim. By resetting trim, we don't have to worry about having a limited range of cyclic motion because we had it trimmed somewhere offset. So we'll do that and then we'll lower our collective which will avoid overspeeding the main rotor disc. And we're going to care a whole lot about this gauge right here which tells us our main rotor RPM. So when I lower the collective what's going to happen is the helicopter will go into a very steep nose down dive. That's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to pull out of that dive with aft cyclic and it's going to cause that air washing up as we fall to spin up the main rotors and bring it back up to around 90 to 95 percent rpm that's our target from there we want to level off and then use small cyclic adjustments nose down or nose up to control our airspeed our forward airspeed and our descent rate and our goal is to find somewhere nice and open and safe to land now there's a big airfield right over there but i'm not sure i'll be able to make it that far so we're going to do our best, try to get to the airfield. If not, we may have to land in one of the farmer fields, which gets a little more sketchy because of all the trees around. Um, but we'll try to maintain a more or less level descent until we're close to the ground. And then once we get really close to the ground, we'll flare a little bit, not too much. We don't want to strike the tail, but we'll flare a bit to arrest our forward speed and then bring up our collective to arrest our descent rate. And hopefully we'll touch down fairly smoothly. It's going to be a bit of a bumpy landing, but with a little luck and some good timing, it can be fairly smooth. So we're going to unpause here. We're up at about 500 meters or so. Actually, I think we're a little above that 600 now. And we're going to hit our fuel stop, engine stop. There. All right, trim reset. We're going to steer ourselves with anti-torque. Collective is down. Here we nose down. Now I'm going to pull aft cyclic gently and pause here actually if you can see there my engine or my main rotor rpm climbed back up to about 95 96 percent and then we're just going to try to hold this so we're mostly level and we just try to hold this sort of descent here we're aiming for that runway if we need more airspeed we can nose down a little Trying to stay above 80% main rotor RPM, below 80, and you very rapidly lose your lift. I think we're going to make it over the fence to the runway. As we get close here, we can lean up a little bit and add some collective. Just a little bit, add more collective as we get closer to the ground. Nose down so we don't stop completely. And we're down. So that could have been a little smoother. I could have waited a bit longer to flare and set down a bit smoother. But if we hop out here, it looks like nothing's broken, nothing's on fire. We didn't strike the tail. We just kind of came down a little hard on the gear. So we're alive, we're on the runway. Overall, it was a success, even if it was a little bit rough and break to stop us. All right, so we're gonna do this again, but this time in slow motion. 
So I'm going to unpause and I'm going to do the same thing, hit the fuel stop levers and then do an auto rotation in slow-mo where I have a little more time to talk about what I'm doing and look at some of the gauges. So let's unpause. I'm trimmed for forward flight here and I'm going to shut off the engine. Now I'm resetting my trim, left anti-torque to point the nose, forward cyclic to stay level. Now I'm reducing my collective all the way down and we're going to dive. I'm going to turn off the audio warning and start to pull aft cyclic to get out of this dive before it becomes unrecoverable. And you'll hear the main rotors start to spin up again. You can see on there that they are indeed climbing. We want that 90 to 95% RPM. If we go above 100, we overspeed it and we can damage things. If we go below 80%, we will lose lift too rapidly to recover it. And then we look for a level attitude and try to maintain this glide down. So far, so good. If we need more airspeed, which we have plenty of right now, we are 200 kph, which is lots. I believe we're actually more efficient at almost half that. 100 to 130, I believe, is what the documents say. But we're just going to hold this because I think it's going to get us where we need to be. Try to level out a little here, bring our RPM up just a bit. So this time we should have no trouble getting to the runway. But you can see our descent rate, like our VVI here, is pretty low. Like we're descending very rapidly and this would damage, possibly even kill us if we hit the runway this hard. So what we want to do is as we get really close down to the ground here is start to nose up a bit to arrest some of that forward speed that we have. And then start to collective up to arrest our descent just before we land. And again, I did it a little bit early, I think, but as we get close to the ground, yeah, descent right there, I've already brought it up to three meters per second. And I can use a little more collective to bring that down even further and manage that descent rate. If I can touch down at one meter per second like that, now I was leaning back a bit far, but that was a lot softer. It's possible I may have struck the tail, but it doesn't look damaged. And again, nothing's on fire. Nobody's dead. The helicopter is probably safe to use another day. So it's a fairly straightforward process. Just pull out of the dive, keep yourself level, watch your rotor RPM, and then try to set down as gently as possible. One of the most critical things you can do when this happens is pick your landing place. Figure out what's around you, what's the safest place that you think you can make it to, and head for that. Give yourself as much time as possible. And it's also worth noting that the lower you are, the less effective this is gonna be. If you're just above treetop height, there might not be anything you can do about it. So altitude is your friend in a lot of helicopter things when it comes to recovering from dangerous situations. Let's turn this off. There. And restore speed. Okay, so that's auto rotation in the hip. It works the same in more or less any helicopter. Um, there are some targets you want to look for in terms of the main rotor RPM, in terms of your descent rate, in terms of your forward airspeed that I didn't necessarily hit but you'll get a feel for it and the more you practice it the better you'll get at it so hope that made sense if i got something wrong if i missed anything please let me know below and i'll see you guys for the next video